Right, welcome to today's webinar. It's the CMC Weekly Charting Analysis with uh, with Jasper Lawler. Just going to have a quick skim through these uh, risk warnings here. Obviously, giving you plenty of time to read through them in depth. Any questions at any point? We've got a Q and A box or a uh, chat box, so you can text through there. And I'm happy to answer any questions. You can send it through to the group or just send it to me individually uh, and stay a bit more anonymous. Mm -hmm. Right, well, we're, we're, uh, we're, at the, uh, we're at the start of the, a fresh new week. We had a bit of a sell off in, in equities last week, bit of a rebound in the dollar, a uh, slight bit of an insta instability in, uh, in oil and um, a good late rally in gold which is petering out somewhat today um, the big events this week are going to be the the bank of england and um, we've got u.s retail sales at the end of the week preceding the bank of england on thursday we have uh, uk industrial production we had chinese tra trade data over not over the weekend uh, wasn't great but we've managed to digest it okay in markets for the time being, uh, helped a little bit by the the higher oil price, driven by those Canadian fires, mm. uh, which has obviously cut production over in in, uh, in Canada. Also, talk of a new Saudi oil minister um, could perhaps, even though he said he's going to keep policy the same, perhaps it could usher in a new era in which maybe they get a bit more aggressive on, on production cuts. Um, so a few things supporting the oil price that's supporting equities. Um, <coughs> I suppose um, the other thing would just be at the end of the week we had this we had we've got uh, CPI tomorrow morning from China and then uh, uh, next weekend there's something more to consider for the following week we've got some Chinese retail sales and industrial production data but um, a bit of a theme going on that uh, some of the economic data has been slowing in April so we actually had some some decent uh, data from Germany today the factory orders but that was from March and so things were actually picking up in March that was the same in China but things seemed to have rolled over a bit in um, in April so that's kind of dampening global growth concerns and I think goes some way to explain why we've seen a bit of a dip in equities nonetheless um, the show is not over yet I think because you can see here that, that we had this um, this trend line set up in last week's webinar and we were basically saying this is one of the, you know, one of the uh, the risk factors for um, for whether, you know, once this trend line breaks, we've got to watch out for for markets rolling over. Now it did break. Um, we got a couple of close, uh, a couple of closes below the trend line, but then we got a solid rebound on Friday, and that's put us back in business. We basically can see that we we had several opens and closes in around that 17 uh, 550 area which is a good round number we've got a good bounce off there so we've kind of held we've broken the trend line but we've held the range uh, so we if you drop down to a sort of four hour looking chart um, you can see in a bit more detail that we've kind of that trend line did come into play quite nicely we we bounced off it in the last few hours today and so to my mind that suggests that we need another run back towards these peaks in order to determine uh, whether we've really topped out in the markets and I think that that makes sense because this has been such a strong rally it's due a big pullback but obviously everyone's still in buy the dip mode to me this looks like a, a, a bigger dip you know it is a bigger dip than we've uh, experienced since the lows in February and it's suggestive that we could come up and roll over again uh, but you know we, we haven't quite met that point in which we're rolling over yet and we're seeing some of similar things in some of the other equity markets. Uh, so to me, this where where we kind of uh, this would have been the logical place for the market to bounce and push through into new highs. Here we didn't. We saw that sharp breakdown there, and we sort of hovered around. Eventually broke down, and a similar thing happening in this area. So this will be one layer barrier to overcome. I suspect we will. Um, you know, because this this kind of to my mind puts us more into kind of range trading short-term range trading so this is the prior low we've come right down to test it so to my mind it, that should tell tell me that we're, we're going back up to test uh, 18,000 is obviously a big barrier 
uh, but then the uh, the previous peak around the sort of 18,170. So I suspect th this could cause a little bit of a pullback, the 17,850, but I suspect we get through to 18,000 again um, as, as momentum picks up from this from this failed uh, failed breakdown. Because obviously anyone who is short down here at these lows, they're going to be scrambling and covering, and anyone who's short um, uh, in any way in, in these kind of bounce, as soon as we get up to here, people are going to start scrambling out of these shorts, and that should be enough, I think, to push us back up to the highs again. As I mentioned, looks kind of similar in some of the other markets. Um, the, f the, the FTSE 100, the UK 100, as we call it, has bounced off the bottom of its uh, previous trading range. So you can see quite, quite kind of crisp uh, price action in a way. Uh, we broke out of this tight range here. We came up, we previously discussed how we bounced off the 200 week moving average um, and then we've come down we tested the top of the range weren't able to galvanize enough, enough galvanize enough uh, demand off there and so we've broken down and we've come back to the bottom of the range here and the, the, these two lines I've had in um, since that since that range developed a few weeks ago uh, and they're holding up pretty well and I, th I think even though last week was a, a pretty pretty big sell-off as you can see from that weekly chart Friday again a bit of a turning point um, you know, you can see a pattern here across the global equities, and to my mind, that suggests that um, again, first layer of support, that old resistance again. Um, you know, you never know; we could suddenly start rolling over rapidly. In my sense, that's probably not going to happen. Again, I think we get probably back above six three hundred, um, and and then again, the risk rolling over. So that first layer of support to, to watch out for six two twenty uh, resistance, sorry six two twenty, up through there. Then I think we're looking into um, just the round numbers around six three hundred, and um, and up to six four hundred again. Um, I assume the sound is working all right. I've not heard any complaints. We've been going for a few minutes now. Um, Maybe I should maybe I should type. Maybe that'd be the thing to do. Sound okay, everyone. Okay, yeah, I think I think we're good. Okay, let's have a look in Europe. Obviously, we've got Boris Johnson chatting at the moment. Um, for those watching this live, um, talking about uh, the Brexit campaign. That does seem to have hit sterling a bit today we'll we'll have a look at that in a minute but um, talking about Europe uh, one of the most popular indices that we trade the Germany 30 the proxy for the DAX you can see that we've basically fallen into a bit of a channel now so if you remember previously if, uh, for those who attended before what we were looking at was a potential um, inverse head and shoulders this was the neckline here which is kind of why the line's been broken several times but I've kept it in just for kind of historical reference um, at this 10 130 sort of area uh, was the neckline we pushed up didn't really get much beyond what became a test of the rising channel got only just above the um, it was also quite a key, key pivot point here so benefit of hindsight the rising channel the pivot point the round number of 10 500 proved enough to be uh, the trigger for quite a big sell-off but we've we found support at the bottom of the channel. Uh, it also was a gap from uh, from last week. Where we've got quite a bullish push open on uh, on Wednesday. We gapped open higher, just about held that gap. At least it acted some form of support, and uh, and now we're pushing higher again. So it's similar situation in that we've got this um, 10 120 with, that we're just approaching as a possible resistance, but it doesn't look like that's going to get in the way too much and it sort of looks like we're going to try and get to the top of the um, the channel again but obviously before we get there we've got that old peak but the, you know these these were apart from the last couple of days where we picked up a bit of selling momentum it was a fairly steady decline and to me still looks like there's more interest you know the longer candlesticks on the on the upside so even though I think longer bigger picture I think I'd you know, I think we're going to struggle as we get to the, the record peaks again, uh, especially in the Germany 30, but also the the US 30. Uh, but for now, you know, just based on you know the trading fr time frame of the next week or so, 
which I think will look quite constructive. Um, flipping over to uh, to currencies now. Maybe I'll just look at sterling first because I had mentioned that. Um, that's looking um, a bit soft. They've actually recovered in the last uh, last few hours or so. So pull this out a bit to the um, a daily chart. So <coughs> we basically maybe I need to get rid of this. We had what some people were calling an inverse head and shoulders here. We got a good breakout higher from it, uh, but we didn't quite get to the 200 day MA. Um, we basically had a false breakthrough 147. Um, basically, a sort of false breakthrough this whole peak over here. We got well above it. Um, I think that was that was something like the ECB or the or the Fed, uh, where we got a big push higher, and then we just rolled over the same day, pretty dramatically maybe the Fed I think and uh, and so since we, we've come down since then and we've seen a bit of dollar strength as we've seen pound weakness and we've seen euro weakness we've even seen the um, uh, the the yen lose a bit of value so from here it looks like you know this this trend line seems fairly prominent so it looks like we're coming down for a retest as of today we're getting a rebound so it, it, it could actually be that we, we hold through what's been a vaguely decent layer of support around the sort of um, 144 area. But you've got to, I think you've got to, to say that while above this um, this April low, we're still pretty much in an uptrend. It's just that we're below the 200 day moving average which is why we're kind of prone to these kinds of sell offs. Um, we're go we're, it's going to be tricky getting back through this, this bearish engulfing candle but I think it would have been worse if we got a bounce and then, a, and then another sell-off, but we never quite got that bounce. We just drifted lower after it. So now I think you know we're due some sort of attempt back into the bearish engulfing candle, and uh, you know then it's at that point that will be that will be the the test moment as to whether we can actually continue to rise and meet what would be the objective from this, which would actually push us above the 200-day moving average. bit of RSI trend line support as well worth noting. But obviously we're curling up now just because the, the, the candle's rising but if we roll over in the candle obviously the RSI rolls over with it so bear in mind you can't judge too much from a, from a, a candle that isn't closed. Mm -hmm. If we do drop down through this, this declining trend line then I think logically we'd come down to, uh, to test the rising one which would take us quite close um, to the bottom of the previous range. Um, down at this 104, uh, 140, 50 type area. Bigger picture here. My take is that it'd be it'd be quite surprising if uh, the UK voted to to leave the UK. Um, I think I just tend to think that people are going to vote for the um, for the safety of more of the same, <coughs> rather than risk rocking the boat people are going to vote for the status quo um, and so I suspect that ultimately that should be supportive of sterling and so the ultimate direction of a pound dollar will just be determined by what the Fed does. Um, at the moment the assumption is that um, they're not doing too much and June doesn't look too likely for a Fed rate hike. Markets pricing it at 8% seems incredibly unlikely but Fed officials are still saying that they expect a return um, inflation to pick up and uh, the job market looks solid and, and international concerns are coming off so they still seem confident in hiking rates uh, two to three times this year even though there's a US election taking place um, the Fed seem confident they would be able to raise rates in and around that election Se seems unlikely but um, still you've got to consider that it's not going to be a, an all out sell off in the dollar while the Fed keep a sort of vaguely obviously they're not hiking rates and you know um, we've seen a bit of a drop off in the dollar from the start of the year but they they still are maintaining that they're normalizing policy so here you can see the similar sort of thing taking place in the euro I did reference the, these uh, these couple of charts actually in a 
the snapshot video that they did on, on Euro Sterling, and we'll have a little look at Euro Sterling to see how that's holding up uh, the confluence of resistance I mentioned. Uh, but here you can see on the weekly chart, fa fairly telling evening star formation on the weekly chart at this line, which um, you know, as you'll, you'll know from the previous webinars, that that's been drawn in based on this this peak here, which is kind of like an average of all these these breaks, um, and obviously it's held here and it's held again in terms of the weekly uh, weekly open, and we've closed below it. So tried to push all the way up, failed. That's a f that's a fairly bearish candlestick on the face of it. So, if you're trading off that off the tr off the longer term range, and if you're trading off that bearish weekly candle, then really what you want is a a little bout of strength to take you up towards 115 for opportunities on the downside. Uh, but we've got to consider the fact that still for the time being uh, we're actually putting in a higher high and uh, and still even if we come down a bit further it's still above this low at 112 so we've still got room to put in a higher low and, and push higher again so that's that's a risk factor there so it's not going to be a straight line uh, the straight line down never is obviously but um, we need uh, we, we need really to kind of be taken out the, the 112 area um, to, to surely pick up the momentum and then obviously get back below the 200 day moving average to, to have any real hope of a sustained downtrend. So I mentioned Euro Sterling, I've done a whole video on it so I'm not going to linger on this. There's basically a confluence of resistance areas in around this one, uh, 0.7930 to 50. Um, so I think it's one of those where it's, um, you know, it's not it's not rolled over massively yet, which is, to be honest, not a great sign. Um, it's, uh, you know, you kind of want the momentum pick up straight away to show that everyone's on your side. But for the, for the time being, it's respecting that resistance. You can see it on the short-term chart here. Um, <coughs> this peak here. You know, and that's where we've rolled away from now with a bearish engulfing on the four-hour chart. Um, so the market's going to try and get back through 0 0.79 if it fails then maybe we can see this pick up and break these lows and then that would be a, a lower lower high and then a lower low on the shorter time frames <coughs> suggesting maybe that this uh, longer term pattern is going to start picking up some momentum but it is one of those if the 0 0.7950 gives way if you see a close above there then obviously that negates uh, the kind of area that we're looking at and would actually quite be quite a bullish sign um, because we do have this rising trend line, a 50% retracement, uh, we have a 200 week moving average in that area and a, a potential neckline of a head and shoulders pattern. If we come down to here, you know, the neckline is going to be somewhere down here and that would point, I would say, back, to, you know, back towards the, the 200 day moving average again. Quick look at dollar yen, we've been crawling higher in dollar yen picking up a bit of steam today we're through these pre prior lows um, and given that there isn't really much in the way uh, you know just looking at this daily chart here it isn't much in the way of resistance would suggest that we are probably back into range conditions and going to go up and try and test that 21 day moving average again uh, sorry the 50 day uh, moving average again and we've also got a kind of trend line through these through these peaks which it looks like the market's going to try and retest um, because we had mentioned uh, back up again another snapshot video I did on um, uh, on dollar yen we mentioned 105 um, and this is the this is the kind of longer term support that we had there which we've just bounced off so that um, that longer term objective has kind of been hit in dollar yen you can see here and so I think you can you know when you pull back to this longer term weekly chart you can see some couple of pretty big levels just above 105 and we're getting a rebound um, as well as this 200 week moving average um, so big bearish engulfing weekly pattern there so still chance to roll over again 
but you can see why based on these areas that we're, we're getting some pushback before we eventually could roll over. Um, we look at crude, it's coming off its highs a bit today, particularly Brent. Um, we basically got a kind of rising channel here. Um, unsurprisingly, given how reliant they are, looks a bit like the the DAX. Um, but we've got a, we've got a, a more obvious channel. We've come off the top of it. Um, this was a kind of minor low that the market's been holding pretty well. Um, we're in an uptrend. Uh, you don't really want to be looking for shorts, but this 44.40 type area has become quite prominent. Look at how many days we've been holding above that. Um, so if we do close below there, that would suggest some momentum has been lost and uh, the, the bulls have lost that battle and we could get a retest of that, uh, that rising trend line again, which would probably come somewhere in close to the... Um, the 200 day moving average kind of makes sense going to break out and then push back to test it test the resolution of the uh, the balls and then try and push higher again is a, is a possible scenario here obviously given the strength of the market we could have put in the low we could be gunning for 50 um, even just from these levels so gold now um, looks like it's in this sort of channel there's, there's only a couple of tests really on the top and the bottom but th they are um, you know we are seeing some symmetry here from this low to, to this low is perfectly in sync with this peak to this peak in gold uh, and given that we had a nice bullish engulfing candlestick on Friday because of that um, that weak jobs number we saw a bit of a chop around in uh, in the euro dollar on Twitter I kind of joked that we're going to get a 50 pip bounce and then a 50 pip drop um, it turned into like a 50 pip bounce almost perfectly but then a, more like a 10 or 20 pip drop um, uh, not much really reaction in forex but gold was strong um, just because the, the headline number missed expectations um, again reduces a chance of a US rate hike in June <coughs> but today a really weak follow through um, on what is quite a strong candle from, from Friday so looking like actually these two layers of support that we've been highlighting for a while um, and you know this one works beautifully the 1270 we've got the nice bounce um, but we haven't been able to you know we've got kind of basically a false break through those those closing levels and we've rolled over quickly and um, 126350 is the other one is the other big one and could hold um, you know given the unlikelihood of a US rate hike that certainly could hold um, but it's looking increasingly likely that they might give way and take us right back down to the bottom of the channel again, which would fit, I think, probably quite nicely with 1227, those lows, sort of, you know, it's like an average of those two lows um, from April. And uh, how are we doing for time? Well, actually, we're doing all right. So just quickly, lastly, I'll have a look at copper, just because that saw a real sell-off last week. Um, if you... Um, <coughs> If you read my morning note this morning, I've touched on briefly that um, copper and iron ore have been weak. You may have read, uh, you know, may have read separately that um, China have been clamping down on industrial metal speculation that got a little bit crazy. Uh, went some way to ex ex explain why metals have done so well in the last few months because um, there was a lot of speculation in China. Uh, that's been clamped down on, and, and metals have uh, fallen off quite sharply. Uh, we don't trade iron ore; it's mostly in forwards. <coughs> But uh, copper is a more liquid market, and you can see that was a big, big old sell-off, and it was the fourth attempt to break 2230. That is proving a really massive resistance. You can see here, and difficult to call that a double top, just because we didn't really have a preceding trend. You know, just this little rise off the the January lows, um, but nonetheless, pretty solid resistance. And so I think the assumption now is that we're in a sort of range. Um, so the pop possible bottom of that range is uh, is 206.50. I've got highlighted on the chart here. Just that that low we put in here, or we could come back down to test that broken trend line down again, which may by the time we get there may be closer to that uh, multi-year low around one sort of 90 odd. 
Um, and then obviously worth mentioning for now, we've got a kind of unconfirmed, just two touch possible trend line that we're kind of stalling at for the time being. So that's it. I hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, remember we've got the Bank of England later. It's you know it's almost definitely that they're not going to vote for a rate hike. Obviously, they're pretty much all going to vote to to keep rates low at nine to nine to zero. Um, but the thing to watch out for is that we've got the inflation report. Pretty much, uh, the Bank of England are using every opportunity to to highlight the risks of um, of the Brexit vote, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them downgrade forecasts again to uh, for inflation and growth and yeah to be honest we have had some some softer data um, like I mentioned at the start of the webinar during April and um, you know I think reason enough there to, to probably downgrade both both forecasts which is um, a bit of a bit of a risk to to sterling but obviously we've got to consider the dollar factor as well um, so uh, that's all that's all to be that's all to be considered um, US retail sales on Friday, the big one again, and uh, UK industrial production on, on Wednesday, and then otherwise we've just got corporate results to, to push equity markets around. Um, st yeah. If you're trading any US stocks, uh, the busy ones this week might be the, the retailers. We've started to hit those couple of weeks where the big US retail stocks report, and obviously, as I mentioned, we've got the US retail sales um, on Friday too. Okay, thank you very much all for attending. Good luck with trading this week. Um, that's Jasper signing off. Cheers.